All right, so now once we have our SPSS data file, so instead of two worksheets, what SPSS has are two views. You have your data view and your variable view, okay? So the way this works is every row in the variable view represents a column in the data view. So see here where I have my ID, my baseline systolic, my baseline diastolic, my last. If I click back here, it, and they're, they're in the exact same order. So if, you're, if you have a very large data set with a lot of uh, variables, um, know that they're always in, in exactly the same order. Okay? The variable view are the attributes of your data set. The data view, obviously, are the data, okay? That's how you differentiate the two. So if I wanted to create a new variable, whether it's from a blank data set or from an existing data set, what you'd simply do is you start off by giving it a name. So I'm going to give it a name, sample variable, and that worked. If I had given it a different name and then try to put a, see how it gives me, I can't have any illegal characters. So it doesn't allow for spaces, and it does not allow for special characters. So the name uh, column is very specific, and it can be alphanumeric, it can be uppercase, lowercase, but you can't have special characters, and you can't have any spaces. It's going to default some items in here, and most of these defaults actually work pretty well. The majority of the time, you're going to want to be in a numeric. SPSS loves numbers. It loves data. So even if your field is like gender or ethnicity or uh, country, you're probably going to want to still create it as a numeric unless it's, say, a date field uh, or a currency field or a string field. If it's a string field, like a comment, then you're going to want to put it in as a string. But anything that you can categorize or measure, you're going to want to put in as numeric. The width and decimal places, again, these are just how it looks on the screen. Uh, if you want to go out, it's going to default to two decimal places. If you don't want two decimal places, if you want, you know, if you want to change it to zero, you do it there. The label, you have more versatility in the label than you, than you did in the name. So in the label, you can pretty much do anything you want. You can have a space, you can have a special character, and it's going to be okay with that. The values are going to be used if you have a, a categorical data set. So let's say we ha let's say we're doing uh, gender, and I'm going to have I'm going to code it one for male. Put in the one, click add two equals female, and click add. And now I have a categorical data set. Notice here in my in my um, data set that I've created, I have for example I have region, and if I click I have I have these categories, and it's one one through seven. Uh, I have continuous variables like blood pressures, and I don't have any values set up because it can be any number within a range. Okay, so that's one easy way to tell that you have a categorical versus a continuous variable. The other way is in the measure. Okay, so you know the missing, the columns, the align, the roll; those are pretty much going to be default settings. It is important that you identify the type of variable that it is. And it can either be scale, ordinal, or nominal. What is a scale variable? A scale variable is a continuous variable, like blood pressure. It's going to be within a range. It can be any number within a range, but a range of maybe 100 points. Okay, So you wouldn't make that a, a, a categorical variable. Um, an ordinal variable is, a, is an ordered set. So if you're looking at, say, grade in school or income levels, something where the numbers actually escalate and there is a, a, a value-based difference between those. Third kind is a nominal variable. So if you're looking at, say, um, race and you have black, white, and Hispanic, um, you may have coded it as one, two, and three, but those nominal variables, those are just simply for coding purposes. They do not represent any any meaningful value. That's how you kind of differentiate these. Okay, so another way to tell if you have a continuous 
versus a categorical variable then is just looking at the raw data itself. So obviously a blood pressure is going to just have a bunch of numbers um, that have a, you know, a range that you'll want to measure versus uh, say the gender column here where you have a, a series of ones and twos. So the ones are for males, the twos are for females. If you can't remember, you always just go back. You can click, you can toggle back and forth. You can run statistics from either view, so you don't have to be in the, in the data view. You just simply go to gender, click on the values, and you see, okay, one for male, two for female. That will be important when you run some of your statistical tests later on. And so again, and you know, you can actually create, see we created this sample data set. We can also, you can create a data set on the fly right in the data view itself. It's going to give it a random name. Uh, I just, you know, put a number in there. And if I click back here, I have my data set, my, my field right here. So it's already tried to put some stuff in there. So I'm going to make that a scale variable. And we're off to the races. Okay? All right. So uh, hopefully that will give you a little bit of a um, baseline for the, the variable view and the data view. So now let's go.